Hey students, welcome back. This is Torres, Elbow Bump. How are you? Are you doing okay? Is your family okay? Remember, if you need anything, please shoot me an email so that I can try to help in some way. So lucky you, you get to hear my voice for another lecture. But the best part is we will be learning about how to calculate population and sample standard deviations. Yay! Let's do some quick review. In the last chapter, we talked about how mean, median, and mode are all measures of central tendency. They all describe how the data is alike. Measures of variability describe how the data is different. There are several commonly used measures of variability. We talked about range, interquartile range already. In the last lecture, we talked about variance. And in this lecture, we're gonna talk about standard deviation. As a reminder, range is just the difference between the maximum value and the minimum value within a set of data. So here I've grabbed a new example. Notice that these numbers are in order. The maximum number is 45 and the minimum number is two. So if we take the difference between 45 and two, which is done right here, see 45 minus two, we get 43 and 43 is the range. The interquartile range is the middle 50% of the values. And if we were to graph this visually, we would see that the interquartile range is the box of a box whisker plot. The box contains that middle 50% of the data. To find the interquartile range, we subtract the lower quartile or the first quartile from the third quartile, also known as the upper quartile, to get this distance, which is the interquartile range. So one of the drawbacks to using the interquartile range is that it uses the median as a central value and not the mean, where most communication when you're talking to people, they usually talk about the average. It does give you a reasonable indication of what's happening with the spread of the data, but it ignores most of the information of the data. It ignores most of the data. And it just kind of shows you where the typical values would exist. With variance and standard deviation, they both use the mean as the central value. So they use the, the measure that is most used in communication as the central measure. So it has more meaning to someone from the beginning. The variance is the measure of how spread out the data is from the mean in squared units. Whereas the standard deviation, which is our lecture today, is a measure of how far the data is spread out from the mean in linear units. The variance is not comparable with the mean or the data because it's reported in squared units instead of linear units. But once we calculate the standard deviation, we will have linear units for both the mean and any other points of data. Let's go back to our idea with just squares. And these are the same examples that I used both in the power and roots lecture that was a couple videos ago and the last video that I did on variance. And so if you remember, variance is like the area within a square. It covers all this part inside of the square, whereas the sides are like the standard deviation. They just describe a length. This is the width of the square and this is the height of the square. The variance is all everything that's inside, all of the area. We also looked at this example with the dogs, right? So this dog is, so this green line right here is the average height of the dogs. We see this big dog, this big black dog is quite a bit different than the mean. This orange skinny dog is a little bit different than the mean. Both of them are above the mean. The little wiener dog is quite a bit shorter or less than the mean. This is just around the mean, and this little French bulldog right here is a little bit less than the mean. So here we see that this is in millimeters, right? This green line is 394 millimeters, and the black dog is 206 millimeters greater than the mean, okay? Above the mean. This uh, orange skinny dog is 76 millimeters greater than the mean. The wiener dog is 224 millimeters less than the mean. This little schnauzer dog is um, 36 millimeters above the mean. And the French bulldog is 94 millimeters below the mean, okay? Now, if we were dealing with variance, we would be talking about 
that difference in square units. Okay, then we'd be saying that the dog is this area different than the mean instead of just the length. And the length actually has more meaning because we usually talk about height and things like that in terms of length. So this has more meaning. What we want is the side of that green square that I made. So we want to know what is the distance between how tall the dog is and the mean. We're gonna be looking for the sides of the squares, not the area of the square. And that's what standard deviation is. It's like the side of those squares. We're just measuring a distance, not an area. So you might say to yourself, but Torres, we already knew the distances here. You decided to square it. True, but what happens when you square something? If I have 206 times 206, I'm going to get, I'm gonna get this square, right? This is supposed to be a square. It's the best that I could do. Same thing here, it's a positive square, right? If I square 76, I'm gonna get another positive number. And if I square negative 224, I'm gonna get a positive number. So not only is it converting this distance into an area model, it's also changing it to all positive numbers, all positive values above the mean. All these positive values can be added up for the sum of squares, which is what we were doing with the variance in the last lecture. We can add all of these up for sum of squares. If you recall, after we add up all the sum of squares, then we can divide by either the population size or the sample size minus one to get the variance. We will still have a bunch of squares that have been summed up. We need the side. So what we have to do after we calculate the variance is take the square root so we can get one of the sides. So taking the square root of the variance will give you the standard deviation. The standard deviation describes the spread of the data in linear units, which is the same units that you have for the data and the mean. So you're talking about everything in terms of the same units. And also you're talking in terms of units that are more comprehensible for the scenario. If you get data values that are close to the mean, then your standard deviation will be small because the data is less spread out. If your data values are far away from the mean, that means that the data is more spread out and you will have a larger standard deviation. Just as with variance, you also have a population standard deviation formula and a sample standard deviation formula. They both use the same symbols. If you recall, the population variance used the symbol sigma, and because variance is a square unit, sigma was squared. The square root of variance is standard deviation, so standard deviation symbol is just sigma with no exponent, okay? The only difference in terms of the formula is that once you find the variance, you take the square root. So the square root is the final step. The same thing happens with sample standard deviation. If you recall, variance for a sample had S squared as its symbol. Because we're taking the square root of S squared, then our sample standard deviation symbol is just S. And here's the formula. This was exactly the same as the variance lecture, but now it just has the square root sign over the whole entire fraction. So the square root is the last thing you do. And what it's done is take the averaged sum of squares, either averaged over the entire population, big N, or averaged over the sample size, minus one, and then found the side of the resultant figure. So let's do an example with the same seven employees that we started with yesterday. So here I have the same problem that we did in the last lecture. I wanted to keep it the same so that you would be able to see the same problem worked out a couple times the same way. I'm gonna be rounding in the same fashion as I did the last time. And let me go ahead and start by picking a color here and making sure that I have my Google calculator. Okay, 
rocking and rolling. Okay, so this says the following data represent the travel times in minutes to work for all seven employees of a startup web development company. And then it has the various time uh, travel times. It wants you to compute the population standard deviation for this data, and it's got I've got the formula over here. So last time we decided to go ahead and just define each one of these uh, pieces. So here, remember sigma is population standard deviation, and I'm just going to put SD for standard deviation. Okay, um, X is your piece of data. Okay, so these are all X's right in through here. Those are the X's. Um, it's got mu, which mu is population mean. And big N is population size. And we have our population size is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that makes sense because they have seven here. So seven here. Okay, so that's population size. Okay, awesome. So let's go ahead and write down all our data points right here. I'm just going to go ahead and fill in my chart. So this is 23, 36, 23, 18, 5, 26, and 43. Okay, first thing I need is my population mean. So let's go ahead and calculate this out. Clear, clear, clear. 23 plus 36 plus 23 plus 18 plus 5 plus 26 plus 43 equals, and then I'm going to divide by 7, equals, I get 24.9. And I'm going to go ahead, again, notice that I am going to round. I'm going to get 24.9. And it is this, the mean is the same throughout the entire calculation. Very good. Now I'm going to take the deviations from the mean. Remember, deviation is differences from the mean. So each one of these pieces of data are a certain distance from the mean. And I'm going to go ahead and take that. So here I have. 23 minus 24.9. So here's my calculator. Clear, clear, clear. 23 minus 24.9 equals negative 1.9. This next one is 36 minus 24.9. 9 equals 11.1. Okay, positive because it's greater than the mean. This next one is 23, and I already did this one. 23 is slightly less than the mean, and if I do the arithmetic, I'm going to get negative 1.9. I already did that one. 18 is less than the mean, so I should end up with a negative num number. 18 minus 24.9 nine equals negative 6.9. Five is a lot less from the mean. So five minus 24.9, I'm going to get another negative number, negative 19.9. 26 is a little bit more than the mean. So I've got 26 minus 24.9 equals 1.1. And 43 is a lot more than the mean, so I'm going to end up with a positive number. 43 minus 24.9 equals positive 18.1. So these are all my deviations from the mean, okay? The distance away each piece of data is from the central value. Very good. 
Now I've got positive and negatives. I need for them to be positive numbers and I need to square them, right? I need to make them the area model so that I can work with adding up all those squares. So I'm gonna take each one of these numbers and I'm gonna go ahead and square it. And if you notice here, see how this is X, X minus mu, mu. So I've got X minus mu. The only difference between this formula and this formula is it says, once you get this, go ahead and square it. So I'm gonna square each one of these. Come here. Come here, little Google calculator. Clear, clear, clear. Okay. Parenthesis, negative 1.9, close parenthesis, and square it. 3.61. Oops. Three point six one. All right, next one is positive eleven point one. So eleven point one squared, one hundred twenty three point twenty one. Negative one point nine squared, I already did once, and we found that that was three point six one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and square negative 6.9. Clear, clear, clear. Parenthesis, negative 6.9, close parenthesis, square, 47.61. Next one is clear, clear, clear. Parenthesis, negative, 19 point, oops, point 0.9, close parenthesis, and square it, 396.01, 1 1.1 squared, 1.21, And 18.1 squared, 327.61. Okay, now I have all my squared deviations. And I'm going to go ahead and scooch this up. Scooch. Okay, so now I need to add all my deviations up to do my sum of squares. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the sum of squares in blue. So the sum of squares, I'm gonna add all this up. Clear, clear, clear. 3.61 plus 123.21 plus 3.61 plus 47.61 plus 396.01 plus 1.21 plus 327.61. And I'm just going to do a quick look over here. I've got 3.61, 123.21, 3.61, 123.21, 47.61. Three hundred ninety-six point oh one, one point two one, three twenty-seven point sixty-one. Okay, I did this all correctly, and I have all pluses, and I'm gonna hit equals. My sum of squares is nine hundred and two, eighty-seven. Okay, that's my sum of squares. Now I am calculating the population standard deviation. So the population standard deviation, I'm going to take the sum of squares, this all this area that I've just summed up, and I'm gonna distribute it evenly amongst the set seven data points. So I'm gonna go ahead and do sigma squared is the sum of squares, which is this number, divided by my n, which is seven. So I'm gonna get 902.87 divided by seven. And if I bring my Google calculator back, divided by seven equals, I get 
0.98. Keep scooching. Scooch. So sigma squared is 128.98. And this is minutes, but it's squared minutes. Okay, because I just added up a bunch of squares. Now I have all these squares that I've added up and I want the side of that square. So in order to find that, I need to take the square root of this. So sigma is going to be the square root. Sorry, I'm gonna have to keep scooching up. Is gonna be the square root of the sum of squares divided by my population size, which is 128.98, the square root of that. So if I go here and I say I want the square root of that number, I get 11.36 And instead of it being minutes squared, I'm down to minutes. So the standard deviation for the population of all these employees is 11.36. How far on average the data is spread out in linear units. As always, I have the worked out solution in the Google slides that are linked in the description box. And also you can see this same work on the Zeitboard, I have linked that site in the description box below as well. So that was an example of finding the population standard deviation. Now we're gonna work with a sample to find the sample standard deviation. So we're gonna use the same numbers as we did before. This is data that represents the travel time in minutes to work for a random and independent sample of employees of a startup development company. And from all the employees, three people were chosen at random and the sample data was five, 26 and 36 minutes. That's how long it took these people, randomly selected people to get to work, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing in finding, going through the same steps, but this time we're gonna do it for the sample. Okay, so let's start by defining some of these symbols. So S is going to be the standard deviation for a sample. So this is sample standard deviation. Now I will say that a lot of the times when I'm working, I usually use SD. In this course, we typically use sample formulas for all of our calculations. So unless you're told otherwise, you should always use the sample formulas, sample variation, sample standard deviation formulas. Okay. So this is the S is for the sample standard deviation. Um, X is the data. So in this example right here, these three numbers are the X's. Um, X bar is the mean of the sample. Uh, N is sample size. And in this case, our sample size is three. Okay, because we've only got three pieces of data. Okay, let's start by writing our data in the boxes here. We've got number five, number 26, and number 36. These are all minutes of how long it took people to get to work. The first thing we need to do is find what the mean is. So let me find my Google calculator here and drag it over. I'm gonna clear it out, clear, clear, clear. Five plus 26 plus 36 equals 67 divided by three equals, I get 22.3. And that's the same for all of them, okay? Now I'm gonna take the deviations from the mean. So I'm gonna take five and from five, I'm going to subtract 22.3, and five obviously is a lot less than the mean, so I'm gonna end up with a negative number. So five minus 22.3 
I get negative 17.3. Okay, 26 is a little bit more than the mean, so I'm gonna end up with a positive number. So 26 minus 22.3 equals, I end up with 3.7. And 36 is a lot more than the mean. So 36 minus 22.3, I'm gonna end up with a positive number, 13.7. Okay, very good. So I've got my deviations from the mean. Now I'm going to square these deviations. By squaring them, I'm gonna convert them from a linear model, right? This is linear, this is linear, and I'm going to make them an area, right? It's gonna be describing an area, but it's also going to turn everything positive. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag my calculator over here, and I'm gonna start with clear, 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 clear. Okay, so I'm gonna do parenthesis, negative 17.3, close parenthesis, and square it, and I'm gonna get 299.29. For my next one, I'm gonna get 3.7 and square it. So clear, clear, clear. 3.7 and square it, and I'm gonna get 13.69. And then I'm gonna do 13.7 squared, 187.69. Okay, and I have all my deviations, all these numbers squared. Now I can go ahead and sum up all these squares and get the sum of squares. So I'm gonna get sum of squares here and I'm gonna add all of these up. So, go ahead and bring this over here. Clear, clear, clear. 299.29 plus 13.69 plus 187.69 equals. My sum of squares is 500.67. Okay, all right, time to scooch, scoochy. Okay, so now I'm going to figure out the sample standard deviation. And notice here, this says sample standard deviation. So that's why I'm using the sample formula. So let's figure out what my variance is going to be. So the next step is variance. I'm gonna take this sum of squares, I'm gonna distribute it evenly over these three pieces of data minus one, n minus one. So let's start by just writing down what n minus one is going to be. n minus one is the same as three minus one, which is the same as two. So I'm going to take, to figure out variance, I'm going to take the sum of squares, which is this right here, Okay, it's all these squared deviations summed up and I'm gonna divide it by n minus one. Okay, so the sum of squares was 500.67 and I'm gonna divide it by two. So here was my 500.67 that I had from the sum of squares and I'm gonna divide by two equals and I'm gonna get 250.34. and these are minutes squared, okay? Because this was minutes, this was minutes, this was minutes, and then we had to square those minutes, it turned into minutes squared, okay? Then we added up all those minutes squared, it stayed minutes squared. Then we divided those minutes squared evenly into the uh, sample size minus one, and 
those were still minutes squared. The only way that we can turn this into just minutes would be by taking the square root of the variance. So here's the formula, okay? This should look familiar because it's right here. It, the only difference is this square root sign. So I'm gonna scooch this up, scooch, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and plug everything in. Well, actually I don't even have to do that because here I have the, I've already done this math. So here I really just have to take the square root of 250.34 minutes squared. And if I bring over my calculator and I say I wanna take the square root of that number, I get 15.8. And now I have minutes because I took the square root of minutes squared. So the standard deviation for the sample, size sample of three, for these employees would be 15.8 minutes. Now let's do a quick comparison, okay? Remember the population is the truth. Let me get my, I'm gonna get green this time. The true, this is the truth. If we had all the employees that worked at that place and we wanted to know what the standard deviation was for their travel times to work, it's 11.36 minutes, that's the truth. Now, this is different than what this is down here because this is just a sample. This is just an estimate. It's off by quite a bit, isn't it? It's off by quite a bit, 11.36 and 15.8, it's off by quite a bit. Why? Because we didn't have a very big sample size and this is just, we didn't even have a very big population size to start, so we didn't have a whole lot of room to work with here. So had the um, sample formula not been used, we would have had even more of an error. Okay, as I've continued to do throughout the lectures, I have also included all the information on how to calculate the variance and standard deviation for the sample data. As a reminder, all this information, the Google Slides and the Zite board is linked in the description box below. So let's go over the steps in a little bit more detail. What I've tried to do is really try to clean up my slides so you can kind of get a better idea of what's happening. Okay, so you have data. The dogs are the data. Then you also have the mean. This green line right here is the mean. It's off a little bit, it's the mean. There is a deviation from the mean. The black dog has a deviation of 206 millimeters above the mean. The skinny orange dog has a deviation of 76 millimeters above the mean. The wiener dog has a deviation of 224 millimeters below the mean. The schnauzer has a very small deviation from the mean and a little bit above the mean. And the French bulldog has a deviation from the mean that is less than the mean, 94 millimeters less than the mean. Okay, so these are all deviations from the mean. How far is the data, the dog's height, from the average of all the dog's heights? The squared deviations from the mean is when I took each one of those and I squared it. Now in my past example, I had this looking more like a rectangle. I tried to fix it so it looks more like a square here because if you take this like 206 times 206, remember we're gonna get that square shape. It's gonna have the same height and the same width. And when a figure has the same height and width, it's a square, right? So here, this is gonna be a square. This is a little bit smaller square because the deviation was less. This is a bigger square. 
because the deviation was more, but also because we squared it, it is no longer a negative value, it is a positive value. It doesn't show direction any longer. This as well is a very tiny deviation. See how this little square is a lot smaller? And then this is a, like a medium deviation, I guess, moderate deviation from the mean. Um, but again, because it is no longer negative, it's now positive, we can see all these squared deviations. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five squared deviations. If we added up all those areas of those squared deviations, here is my attempt to add, sort of add them all up, right? We get the sum of squares. We added up all the squares. We would distribute those squares evenly over the amount of data. The last part is finding the length. Once you have added up the sum of squares and you have this new square that is distributed evenly amongst the data, then you're going to take the side of that squared to find the standard deviation. And that's what you're finding is the length. So let's really quick find um, out how to do this using StatCrunch, using the professor salary example that we used in the last one. We're going to use um, same as before. If you're working with the population standard deviation, you're going to select unadjusted standard deviation for the population standard deviation. And if you are working with a sample standard deviation, you're going to just select the regular standard deviation for StatCrunch. So here's my information. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go into the doctoral salary information. Remember, I like to highlight the entire column by hovering over the columns themselves. Right click, select copy, go into it so where I can click on var1 and then click on var1 and then use control V or if you have a um, Mac, then you should use command V. And generally, I like to stretch this out so that I can see sort of what I'm reading, but they're not really that important in this particular scenario. So I'm just going to kind of scooch everything off to the side here. Okay, now this is going to be my population. For professors, I'm going to say that there are all these are all the professors at a school and I want to know what the population variances and what the population standard deviation is. So I'm going to go ahead and go into stat, summary stats, and click on columns, click salary. I want to click to see how many there are. It's always good to get the mean. Variance and standard deviation will give you the sample variance and standard deviation. And if you go down to unadjusted variance and standard deviation, it will give you the population. Okay, so now this is for population data, so I really don't need these two, okay, because I want the population one. So I want unadjusted variance and unadjusted standard deviation. So here I have the true variance and standard deviation. Let me do that one more time. I have population data, so I want to use the unadjusted values. I'm going to go to stat, summary stats, columns select salary because that is the only quantitative variable. I can use sample size and mean. This is the sample variance. This is a sampled standard deviation. I don't need those. I need the unadjusted values. So I'm going to go down to where it says unadjusted variance and unadjusted standard deviation and hit compute and I get the information here. Okay, now let's do this with sample data. So notice this is 87 values. I'm going to just take a sample of these, not the whole population, just a little sample, and I'm going to put it in a whole new spreadsheet. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken a sample of all of the professors. Okay, so now we're just dealing with a subset of all the professors. I've decided to just choose the assistant professors that were in that as my sample. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to stat, summary stats, columns, click salary. Now since I have a sample, I can go ahead and use the n, the mean, this one that says just variance, and this one that says just standard deviation. 
those are the adjusted values that will use n minus one in the denominator. I hit compute and here is my data. So just one more time, I'm gonna go to stats, summary stats, click columns, hit salary, I want to get the sample data, so I'm gonna get N, mean, variance, standard deviation, and compute. And just to make things a little bit neater, I'm gonna go ahead and put sample data, sample professor data here. Okay, awesome. Now, for our work in this course, whether you're working with stats A or stats B, you should always use the sample formulas unless otherwise directed. So unless I explicitly tell you to use a population formula, you should always just default to the sample formulas for our work. So what's the big idea? Today's big idea is that variance and standard deviation both describe the spread of the data, the differences of the data, relative to the mean or the average. The variance describes the spread in terms of squared units, and the standard deviation describes the spread in terms of linear units. Population calculations and sample calculations use very slightly different formulas. For our class, you should always use sample formulas unless you explicitly are asked to use the population formula. The purpose for the two formulas is to adjust for errors between the true population parameter and the sample statistic that you're able to get with just a subset of the population of interest. So that's it for today. With that said, don't forget to check your emails, check Blackboard, do your homework, and subscribe to this channel. Even better, hit that notification bell so you know when there are new videos for this course. Okay, this is your teacher, Taurus, saying stay safe, and I will be waiting to give you a virtual elbow bump in the next video. Ciao!